All right, um, this video is going to show you how to get some fancy pictures out of your hard-earned CAD model that you've spent uh, however long designing. Um, these are just things that work for me and techniques I've learned, but um, it allows you to get these quality images that you could then talk about in your folder work. Uh, this is obviously designed for my students, but hopefully it will help anyone that's trying to present a design idea using Autodesk Inventor which is an amazing bit of software, by the way. So anyway, um, we're going to look at how to get simple 3D views, how to show uh, an object with parts that have been taken away and made invisible to show inside, uh, how to get a nice straight top, front and side view, what we'd call orthographic. Uh, we're going to show you how to create what I call an exploded view. Inventor calls this a presentation, but this allows you to see how things fit together in a very visual way and then how to do cross-section views um, like you've taken a slice like through a slice of cake of your object so you can see onto the inside and the outside at the same time and then finally how to create a working drawing a dimension drawing like this that you could send off uh, to a factory to to manufacture your product from yeah right <laughs> so anyway this all assumes you've got a finished inventor model now what I like to set up first is I like to make the background white uh, I think when you're copying images onto a, a document or a PowerPoint or however you present your work, it's going to look nicer with a white background because you can get your images closer together. Uh, and even if they do overlap with a white background, you can go to, um, remind me, color, set transparent color, click on your white background, and you'll see what, I mean, see what I mean there. You can get your images nice and close and you can really pack your pages full of info. Having the gradient on there like this, looks awful so to get rid of that go up to file options uh, you'll need to go to colors if it's not already on there and choose one color and presentation and then click apply and close all right the other thing i like to do go to visual style and select shaded with edges now it might look a bit subtle on here because the resolution on this monitor is really high but it's put it will paint little pencil lines in around all the edges and it just makes your object that little bit clearer to stand out. Uh, the other thing you might want to do is mess around. It's down to you. I think shadows, you can turn them on, but they tend to look a little bit, they confuse the drawing. It's down to you, personal opinion. I prefer to just use reflection like that. Okay. Now, if you find your reflection is not reflecting in the right plane, that will be because your view cube is orientated wrong. So, for instance, if I was to, the way you fix that is the reverse of what I'm doing here. So, if I was to be looking at my object this way and right click on the front of the view cube and click set current view as top um, you'll see my reflection is now in some obscure location it's because inventor now thinks this is the top what I wanted to do is tell it that this is the top so the way you do that is you look at with this tool look at the top and that will square your view up and then right click on your view cube set the current view as the top OK, and you may wish to, I don't know, rotate it 90 degrees and do that again until your view cube matches up. Right. So really, make, maybe if your reflections are looking dodgy, then do that. If they look fine, that means you made your drawing correctly from the start and you haven't got to worry. So anyway, that in itself, um, if you want a nice isometric view, click the corner of your cube. And assuming top is top and front is front, you'll get a nice, what I call proper isometric standard picture. Take a screenshot of that. Um, I'm going to press print screen because I've got this wicked little app called Lightscribe installed. I thoroughly recommend it. Um, copy and then paste that into your PowerPoint. Okay. Now I'm not going to I'm not going to do this for all the objects. I'm just going to show you how to create the views. But that's all I do. I paste it in and then whack them together and then I annotate them later. Okay. Um, Lightscribe, by the way, very good. Download it. It just allows you to press print screen on the keyboard and instantly drag a box around something and then do control C to copy it. I find it far less clunky than Microsoft's horrible snipping tool or doing a print screen and cropping everything. All right. So anyway, that's how you do that view. Um, the next view I did was how to show it about the top on. This is dead easy. So if you want to make a panel disappear temporarily, you don't delete it because you'll have to put it in again. Instead, find it over here in the browser and right click and deselect visibility. OK, so that would be my second screenshot. Uh, in my case, I then went on to make this bit invisible, the center section. So I could kind of show clearly, look, it's, it's made up of a lid, a middle section and a bottom. And then you can see how all my components are kind of laid out inside. So that ticks off those first three. 
Um, it's down to you whether you do it from this angle or you change your view around. All right? I find 3D for this sort of thing is much more helpful than a 2D viewing point. Okay. Um, one other thing you might want to do if you want to get a bit arty farty is you can change your view to perspective and that gives you a kind of real life view of it. It does look quite nice actually for certain things but I'll leave it down to you whether you want to um, leave perspective on or not. All right, it just it gives you a perspective as though the object is shrinking the further it gets into the distance. But I'm just going to turn it off for now. Okay, um, <clears throat> right. So that's that one. What was the next one? Oh yeah, how to get a nice side-on view. Well, that's dead easy. We pretty much explained that. Use your view cube. Click the front. Right, click on the cube to give you a nice orientated view. As I said to you, if your views are coming out wonky when you do that, you need to go through that process of looking at it and then right click, set the current view as the top. All right, so hopefully you can figure that one out of your own. I don't wanna make this video too long, so let's move on to, um, we will do this one first, we'll do section views, and then we'll come back to um, exploded views or presentation views. So section view, very easy. Um, under the view tab, you have this little drop down here where you can choose quarter, half, or three quarter view. Half section, simple to use you sorry I'll just do that again half section view you click on the side you want to slice from so for instance if I click on here and drag that arrow you can see depending where I drag the arrow is where it will slice if I hit enter that will just freeze the view like that and um, this is actually a really useful tool when you're doing your modeling as well because it allows you to see inside your box and select geometry that you, you couldn't otherwise see without making things invisible so you know maybe get a screenshot like that might be an idea um, if you want to go back, you just come back up here and click end section. Um, another one that's quite cool is three quarter. So this one's a bit confusing to use. You have to pick one side and then another and then it does it. So if you say pick this one, dragged it all the way back to there and hit enter and then click the top and drag down, you'll see that's kind of made a, a composite of going sideways and down. And that's quite nice as well. It, I, I actually think that's a better quality, more professional cross-section view. All right, so that's something else you could screenshot. So that's how to do section views. And obviously there's quarter section view as well, which kind of does the opposite of this, but you can play around with those. All right, exploded. How do we do this thing? Well, you have to create a whole new mode in Inventor. So with your assembly open, you're gonna go file, new presentation. There's a specific program for doing this or program or bit of file uh, it may ask you to open it sorry i think mine's just got issues because i'm i've saved it in a different location so you probably won't get all these errors but anyway so load it in and then the starring thing you want is tweak components now all you do is you pick the component you want to move so say the lid and you grab the axis that you want to move it in and then click the tick how easy was that you can move in multiple directions if you want. So I'm going to pick the bottom, click Tweak Components. I'm going to come down. And then just to show you, I'm going to click this one and come this way a little bit and click the tick. OK, and you can see it pencils in little lines. Um, now, I'm not going to do the whole thing. I'm just going to do a couple of parts to illustrate it. So it's down to you to tweak them and sort of pull them apart to illustrate how things fit. Um, but you're trying. The whole point of an exploded view is it's a bit like an IKEA flat pack furniture instruction. You're just trying to show, you know, this goes in this hole, this goes in this hole, these bits join together, whatever it may be. Um, what is so obviously that you could take a screenshot from, and that's pretty much what I did here after moving everything around. Um, just be a bit wary if you've got assemblies within an assembly, like these batteries here, um, you can't just click it and move it, you'll have to select all the parts within it. So like I, the first time I did this, I clicked the battery and only a single battery moved. You need to hold down shift and select all of them. But anyway, play around, you'll figure it out. It's not hard. Um, okay. Uh, the other thing that's quite cool, if you can put videos into your media, not my students can't really do that, but if you were doing a presentation to your bosses or something, uh, you can press play here, look, and it will do a nice little animation in the order that you did the explosions and show you how everything fits together. And you can actually rotate your view while it's animating. Um, and this can then be recorded and turned into like a, an AVI video or embedded in something. So really, really powerful tool there. Um, and lots more component uh, features than I can show you here. Okay, good, right, that's that one. And then the final one that my students would need for their coursework is 
what we call a working drawing, an orthographic. Um, this is done again with a new mode in Inventor. So I'm just going to close that presentation down. I don't want to save it. So you go File, New, and this time you're making a drawing. And you need to start by clicking Base. And this will basically give you a base view based on the front orientation of your object. You can change your base view by clicking the cube look if you want that to be your starting point, but it doesn't much matter. So if you click up, it will so that we can see that's drawn the bottom of the object. That's probably one I didn't want. I'm going to move down and it's going to draw me the top view. I'm going to move off to the side, it'll draw me that view. This one it'll do that. And if I move down here to the right, I know the graphics don't show up very well on this monitor because it's such a high resolution, but there are little outlines there. Right, I've got all these views and basically wherever I move in a quadrant will produce a different view projected orthographically from that starting one. When you're done with all of them, right click and click OK. Now in a true orthographic drawing, you'd only really bother with the top, the front, the side and maybe a 3D one if you wanted to illustrate um, what it looks collectively. So I'm going to pick this view. I don't want that bottom one and hit delete. I'm going to click this view and notice I'm selecting it not by clicking on the object but by clicking this little border around it. It doesn't make that clear. And then I'm just going to drag my original view which allows me to move all of them. All right, And then I can, you'll see the other two are kind of linked to it. If you know how an orthographic drawing is done it's basically saying this top edge is the same as that top edge, this edge is the same as that edge, that is that and so on and so forth. I'm going to drag my 3D view over here. Now this is down to you how you present this and if you were an engineering graduate you would do a much better job than I'm going to do with my students who are in year 9 and 10 at school um, and you would do much better annotation but I'm just showing you the basics. So I like to uh, double click on this view and click this option, shaded, click OK and that just gives you a coloured in version. Um, if you wanted to you could click on these views and you can choose it to show hidden um, show hidden lines give it a minute and as you can see that shows you the sort of layout of all the components inside I don't tend to bother with that for my students because it, it complicates things too much um, for what they're trying to do at their level but something to help you later on and just like you did earlier you can do cross-section views and all sorts in here you can do close-ups I can't show you them all in this video but do experiment there's some wicked tools here that'll let you do some really nice views but for my students all I want you to do uh, once you've got your images in go to annotate and the dimension tool and you just need to include the main sort of width height you just click OK right so draw your dimension the main width height and length of your object all right so you just like you do in the sketching in inventor you click and place your two points now you'll notice my numbers are kind of a bit made up really um, they don't seem to be round numbers that's because I just drew this freehand and didn't bother sketching it properly I know naughty um, if you want to, you can override them. So double click on your dimension, go to override display, and then you can you know, cheat. <laughs> um, I wouldn't advise you doing this if it's a real engineering drawing, but um, it works for us. Okay, so put dimensions on it. Um, if you want to do dimensions of something round, you just click on the circle and drag, and then you'll get a diameter. Okay, um, and again, you can click between any two points really and do dimensions, it's fairly straightforward. The other things you may want to do is add in some text and some leader text. So leader text gives you an arrow basically. So I like, you know, you could sort of click here, click, click, hit enter, type what you want to type. I don't know, variable, I'll give it the proper name, potential meter. click OK. All right, do that again. So leader text, click, click, click microphone and you can see you can change the font and the size and all that rubbish if you want to so put some labels on it and explain the main features is what I would get my students to do um, it should put your name in here and you can fill in the detail on the drawing info if you want to if you want some more space on the page you can delete uh, over here you can click ISO and delete get rid of that and you can get rid of the border if you wish to as well so basically I get my students to do that dimension it a bit better than I've done there explain the uh, core components and design features and then dump that into their PowerPoint as well. And that pretty much concludes this video. So there you go. Now you know how to do it. Go do it. Produce some lovely images. 
and be proud of your work. You've spent a long time drawing your CAD models, so show it off. <laughs>